Good morning. We are on day 59 in our journey with Jesus. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 14, verse 5. And he said to them, which one of you will have a son or an ox fall into a well and will not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day? Now, it's, this is a Sabbath controversy that's taking place. He's asking them this because he, Jesus wants to... Um, wants to cure a man that's suffering from dropsy. He wants to bring healing uh, to this man on the Sabbath, but they consider that work um, and that should not be allowed. Uh, but I mean, really, just even on the face of it, it doesn't make a lot of, a lot of sense. Um, on the Sabbath, they were more concerned about what they shouldn't do than what they should do. And that's probably at the fundamental problem of what the Sabbath is all about. Is it a day of ceasing, not doing anything, or is it actually a day where we're to do what God wants us to do? And I think that's at the key here. Um, but all the, this is the last Sabbath controversy. There's four of them in Luke's gospel. So if we just take a quick look at each one, we're going to see what Jesus teaches us about God's will being fulfilled in Christ because he fulfills the Sabbath day. Sabbath going all the way back to Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. Well, let's take a look at, first of all, Luke chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. Jesus defends the disciples for threshing, that is like this, it's removing the kernel uh, of wheat, for example, from the husk. Um, and they considered that threshing and was not allowed on the Sabbath. And basically, like, we would consider it like having trail mix kind of thing. As a snack, you're hungry, you kind of take it out. While they were walking through the grain fields, they could just wake us and have a snack. And they said, that's not, a, the Pharisees had, had determined that that's not allowed. Well, Jesus indicates that the Sabbath actually is not a day for people to go hungry. Um, and if you just think about it, that was not ever God's intention. Uh, they were, people were not to go out and pick manna, for example, in the wilderness journeying on the Sabbath. They were to pick double the day before. And that, only on that, the Sabbath day would the day's previous bread, manna, actually last through that day. Any other day it would go bad. But, so God determined that we're to actually have food on the, on the Sabbath. He doesn't want us to go hungry. But Jesus sets right the purpose of the Sabbath because only he is able to determine what is lawful. And he indicates this in Luke 6, 6, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Pretty awesome. In Luke 6, 6 to 11, so immediately following that, we have Jesus healing a man's withered hand on the Sabbath. And here he proclaims that it is lawful to do good and save life on this day. Um, and so once again, it, it sets out that the, the Sabbath is a day for bringing healing, for bringing life, saving life. In Luke 13, 10 to 7, so the previous chapter to where we're at now, Jesus heals a woman of sickness caused by a, a, an evil spirit even. And he indicates that she's being released from Satan's bondage. And that's also what the Sabbath is for. The Sabbath is for releasing people from harm, releasing them from bondage. Sabbath is very much that day. So um, then returning to the story of this man that has um, dropsy, and this dropsy was often associated with God's judgment, God's judgment against, against sin. So once again, Jesus brings salvation on the Sabbath, delivering this man from the wrath of God. So if we looked at it all together, we see that on the Sabbath is a day for uh, God providing for us miraculously, God providing for us in his way, God bringing, um, God doing good and us doing good even on the Sabbath. There is something we should do on the Sabbath um, for d delivering from the enemy should take place on the Sabbath and delivering from God's wrath, being made right with him and experiencing his help and aid on the Sabbath should be what the Sabbath is all about. If we go back to the Old Testament, we find that this was always God's purpose for the Sabbath. If we look at Isaiah 58, verse 13, 
we see, if because of the Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day. And I think that's a key. Doing what we want, our desires. And it says, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable. And honor it, desisting from your own ways, from seeking your own pleasure and speaking your own word. Then you will take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth, and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You see what the, the Sabbath is for? It's for delighting in God, desiring his thoughts, living under his reign, doing what's pleasing in his sight, not what's our sight. And that's why today we should still have, it's a good idea to have a day of rest, a day set apart, but where we don't do what we normally would do, but even more importantly than that, that we would set our sights and eyes on what God wants us to do. And that's why going to church on, for example, like a Sabbath-like day on, on a Sunday, for example, is a, is a good parallel to the Sabbath. Uh, we don't do what we normally would do. We go to church. We spend time with God's people. We spend more time in prayer, in, in God's word, thinking about other people, helping uh, and, and so on. But what God wants is for that Sabbath day to actually overtake even the other days of our life and that we would more and more live in God's Sabbath, in his rest, in his peace, in his reign. And that's what the Sabbath is all about so that we could actually see every day as a Sabbath um, and yet still retain the notion that God wants us to have rest for our mind for our body and our soul. And we can rest because we know that while we're resting, God is still at work and he always is at work for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson on, on the Sabbath and that because you're working, we can rest. But even more importantly, what it means to enter your rest is to delight ourselves in you and what you're about and what you want. And so Lord, let us have your priorities. Let us be about your business. Let us busy ourselves with things that are pleasing in your sight. Let us make sure we're taking time to spend time with you and your family and, and your people as well. We love you and thank you for um, your goodness and faithfulness in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.